Hello, hi everybody. So I just finished recording a very long video. Uh, we'll be editing that soon on uh, what I, well, basically going over each of my paintings that I did for the 2023 October challenge. The last couple of weeks have been kind of chaotic, but in a kind of a good way because I've been getting treatments for some of the issues that I personally have that are a result of hypermobility spectrum disorder. That's what I call it, or that's what my official diagnosis is. Some people are diagnosed with EDS. They're really similar. I'm not sure that they're not the same thing. I'm not sure what's gonna change as far as the names of these things in the future, but that's what I have right now. I have not been able to make a huge amount of art because I haven't been able to use my arm very much and I've been just focusing on editing, which is fine, and doing a lot of self-care and doing a lot of things to improve my experience of the world, doing things to help myself be the best version of myself that I can be. In this case, it's mostly physical. I'm doing three therapies that I'm going to talk about quite a bit in depth. I'm also doing myofunctional therapy, which is to do with, just Google it. I'm not going to talk about it again here. I've been a little bit bad about doing it because I've been really overwhelmed with everything else going on. And so even though I'm really grateful to be getting the therapy and hopefully go get a tongue tie release at some point and increase, decrease the amount of pain I have as far as tension in the neck and shoulders go. That's gonna maybe take a little bit longer than what I wanted or expected because these other therapies are taking precedence. And those three therapies are Nuka, Prolotherapy or Prolozone, in my case of what I specifically got, and slit. Slit I won't be getting for a couple of more weeks, but I hope to start it before the end of January. And I'm sharing with you about these therapies because I am somebody who does a lot of research and tends to know about a lot of things, but not know if it's like a good idea or safe or if some, anybody else has done it. So I'm just kind of <laughs> making this video of like, hey, here's some of the things I've done that have helped me and, or at least that I've done recently. I've done tons and tons of things over the years, um, mostly to do with diet, exercise, environmental modifications, which we can talk about at a later ta time. But I wanted to share that here just because sometimes you just like, would never know it existed. I saw about Nuka on Mommy and with Migraines video and I'm so grateful that I saw it because it's completely changed my healing journey. It went from just this to an immediate improvement and I'm super grateful for that. So I just wanted to make sure I was telling you about all these therapies in case you aren't the kind of person that just wants to research everything. You want to spend all your time researching medical conditions. Like who wants to do that? Like I don't, I just have because uh, I like surviving in the most optimal state possible. So I'm trying, just trying to figure out how to make things a little bit better. And um, I'm here today to tell you about some of them. Got prolotherapy, I had uh, mentioned that I might that I was being assessed for it to see if it was a good fit for me and we decided it was and I went and got it on this shoulder and I haven't been able to do as much because of my healing that's being done. I got prolotherapy prolozone in hopes of helping my shoulder stay in the socket and stop subluxing and that'll help me in the long run be able to paint more and use more force. That's what I'm hoping at least. <laughs> That's my goal. Also, you know, less pain and all that. But yeah, I'm hoping for an improvement in the quality of my life from this uh, experience, but it is something to recover for. My, my family has been mostly walking the dogs for me. I say for me, it's usually a, a communal job that I do independently often, and I've been luckily able to have somebody else do it just because they could jerk suddenly, and that would be problematic. I wanted to share with you about the prolotherapy specifically because I have had hypermobility probably my whole life, but 
there was never anything that would help with the sublex, the sublex, sublex, sublexing. We'll just say sublexing, <laughs> sublocations. That's what I was looking for. Um, there was nothing that would help with all that. And I did find prolotherapy a couple of years ago, but I was like, eh. uh, I mean, I've come across a lot of, you know, things that sound good on paper, but will they actually work for me? Maybe, maybe not. But I wanted to make this video because I finally have done it myself. I'm not far enough into the process that I can say whether or not it works. My shoulder feels different, but it does take a, quite a while for the effects to take place. Oh, I was going to say subluxations and dislocations. So, you know, for me, I mostly experience subluxing, not full dislocations. Uh, and so prolotherapy can help fix the damaged tissue around, it's not even necessarily damaged, but in like a, an individual without hypermobility, it would be damaged tissue. It would be your connective tissue that's really difficult to heal because there isn't a lot of oxygen going. Is that right? Why don't I know more about my body? It's, this is really memory issues. I just read this like yesterday or the day before and I'm just not remembering. I was not, you know, super comfortable necessarily doing it, even though I heard about it a couple of years ago. But after I spoke with my doctor about it, asked her what she thought. She thought it was great. She has somebody that she knows that can do it. Um, and I went in and I had it done. And it's hopefully a game changer. But I really haven't heard anyone else talking about it very much. And so I wanted to share that here. I'm also getting Nuka and my doctor said that I am probably at this point healed enough with my MCAS that I'm eligible to do slit again. So I haven't been able to do that since summer of 2021. I tried it and got very sick and um, experienced a full MCAS a full, I, I was like subclinical MCAS and then moved to um, obvious MCAS. I think I was already on that trajectory probably from cheating a lot and just eating whatever I wanted even if I was allergic to it. Not that, not whatever I want, but like in moderation eating some of the things I was allergic to around the same time that I got slit. So there might have been like a cascade of effects, but the, the slit definitely pushed me over. When you talk about hypermobility, there's a lot of talk about managing symptoms but it like a lot of this a lot of the things that I'm talking about right now would actually help the root cause of some of the issues instead of just putting a band-aid on the symptoms and I wasn't aware of any of these treatments until maybe the last couple of years so I'm just telling you my experience with them it's been relatively positive so far that the nuca has been the most obvious change prolotherapy I still have to wait and see but I've done it and I lived through it so whether or not it helps in the long run I'm hoping to tighten up my shoulders my hips hands, everything I can. I mean, it's 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 going to take probably years and years till I've tightened up everything. And there are some things I won't be able to tighten, like my gut. <laughs> Your gut, I can't necessarily tighten with prolotherapy. That's assuming that it continues to work for me and my body and that I don't have any adverse effects that make me need to stop it. But the whole thing with hypermobility, I need to do a whole video on it, but the whole thing with hypermobility is it's in your collagen. Your collagen's in every part of your body. So my eyes, for example, my need for bifocals came at a really young age, and that happens to a lot of people with hypermobility. And there are other eye issues that happen and there's not necessarily any specific treatment that I'm going to talk about today that would take care of any of that. But doing the nuca and the prolotherapy, it gives less stressors in other areas of my body. And so hopefully things like my eyes and my gut, which can't be directly touched with these therapies, hopefully the stress on the rest of my body will be lower and then there'll be more um, opportunities for my body to take care of and heal and pay attention to those areas. So that is my hope. Do I have anything else to say on the matter? Yeah, I could talk for hours. Um, I would say prolotherapy is a little bit more intimidating than I expected because it involves needles. I'm not in any way afraid of needles, love acupuncture, but is a lot of liquid. 
that goes into your your shoulder. I had four needles for this shoulder. And I don't know if that's normal for this procedure, but I would just say like, it was a little more intense than I, what I was expecting. But I mean, if it works out, it's so worth it in the end. And it's outpatient and anything that avoids going under surgery, antibiotics, anything like that, I am like so for that. So I am going to stop here because I'm not even sure if I'm going to post this video. It just seems kind of like an advertisement <laughs> for certain therapies, but it's not. It's just, I just want people to know that it exists um, that that Nuka prolotherapy and SLID exist and they're really great treatments for people who are, have the married, married, M-Y-R-I-D, is that how you spell it? Myriad of symptoms that people with EDS, hypermobility spectrum disorder, um, autism spectrum disorder, all of these spectrum disorders oftentimes have issues with the food allergies and the, the maybe the you know, like fainting and full body pain. Like, hey, I found these three treatments that I'm, okay, one was totally a fail. But one has been a grand success. One's a possibility. And third, I should be able to try again and should have some success. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. Update about SLIT. I talked to my doctor over the weekend and the answer is no. No, we're not going to be starting SLIT right now. I'm actually not eligible according to my allergist. The other doctor thought that I might be according to my other symptoms, but according to my allergist, mouth sores need to be 100% gone before we can put things under my tongue. So we're going to uh, go through a couple avenues to see if we can get the mouth sores to stop, that maybe they're not MCAS related. So I just want to let you know that those therapies exist and that if you're struggling with any of these issues, you know, um, I'll make a more cohesive video at some point when I can sit down and do the research and um, have a script I follow. So this is a little bit more cohesive, but for now, this is what I've got for you. And thank you for listening to me chat about all this and I will see you in the next one. Bye.